Farah Hanoon for MMA Junkie, and I'm joined by Trevin Jones, who picked up a spectacular comeback win over Timor Valley of this past weekend. Trevin, how are you? I'm good. Have a great. How are you guys? Doing good, doing good. I mean, they call you five star. That was a seven star performance, I fan. I know probably like I know you were confident and I knew you could get the job done, but when you look at a moment like that, like this is something that's gonna be played in in you know those videos that they're gonna play 20, 30, 40 years from now, you're gonna be on there like this. It's gotta feel cool, right? To be part of like UFC history. They're gonna be playing that moment back as kind of one of the greatest comebacks ever. Yeah, man. Um, it's exciting to have one of the greatest comebacks ever. Um, man, I, it's more exciting for everyone else. But like you said, uh, I knew I can do it, and I was. Um, I just stayed in the fight, man. I, I just want to keep going and keep going. UFC debut, a lot of energy. Um, uh, it took a lot out of me cutting weight for that first round. So you know, I, I give him that first round, but. I definitely um, see myself on this level. Um, I'm uh, kind of happy it went the way it went because I, I got to show a lot more durability, uh, come back. Um, it's just great. I'm happy. You're right. How hurt were you? Now, I know a body kick wins you. Weirdly enough, I've actually experienced it before, but the difference is I get a nice timeout where everyone huddles around me and checks if I'm okay. It happened to me on the basketball court. So mm -hmm. I know that it's a horrible feeling. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you're, you're in a fight and there's no timeouts for you. How hurt were you uh, in that moment? Was it that kind of second shutdown or, or did it kind of carry on uh, for, for, the, for a good portion of the time? Well, after someone lands a good shot like that, I already know that they're going to keep attacking it. So... It was like an initial, and it was a good hit. It was a very good push kick to my gut. Um, it went straight to my back, man. It was good. It didn't take the air out of me, nothing. It was just stinging, and I knew he was going to keep coming back to it. He had very good kicks, so it was more like an issue. I thought I was out of it. I came back into it, and it was just like protect your body after that because I knew he was going to attack it so many times, and um, he, was, he, he was a very good opponent, man. Like, people are... People know he was good. That's why the credit is there. And you know, I I I I hacked the storm. You know, um, like you said, it was a very good kick. It, it sat me down. I sat down maybe twice, I believe. But man, I'm tough. I've been in fights like that before. I fought tough guys just like him, and that was a regular Trev Jones day. Credit to referee Chris Tyone, but credit to you too, because your body language, and this is very important when we look at re or fight stoppages, referees are in a tough position, right? Either they stop it early, they stop it late. But your body language, credit to you, as hurt as you were, you were kind of moving as much as you possibly could. Did you, did you know that you have to kind of do that in the fear at the same time being hurt and trying to defend yourself, but at the same time, the fear of having the referee stop? Because you were credit to you kind of moving around and doing everything possible to show the referee that you were trying to defend yourself and you were still fighting. Yes, um, it was just an onslaught. It wasn't that, um, it was the onslaught of punches. It wasn't that I was even so hurt after the punches. I just knew he was going to bring the onslaught on me. And with the way I, that I got hit, I couldn't handle the onslaught at the time. I had to just take, take, take. Trevi will make it to the next round. I knew I'll make it to the next round. As long as I didn't get caught with a big knee down the pipe, I was mostly trying to get my head out of line for the big knee. But the UFC, I'm a fan of all these guys. I see some guys that I'm a fan of. You know, they're they're talking some smack. So it's gonna be nice now. It's gonna be very nice now. I'm excited. You know. You cut up there for a second. What were you saying? Who was talking smack? Um, I see some guys that I, I see some guys in the UFC that I like, and I, I, and I, you know, I'm a fan of UFC. I see some guys that I like, and you know, I get to go back and I see the tweets and all that. Now I got, I see, some, I see some of them saying some stuff, but they don't know. One day they're going to see me in there and they're going to be across from me and they're going to see what value of felt. They're going to see the, the determination and the drive that I have in the sport and that I'm not a regular person out there. Like I, I I'm ready for the war, man. Like. You're gonna have to put me out, they, and they're gonna figure that out. They just didn't know who Trev Jones was. Was there anyone specific in your division that you feel like you could see down the line that was talking smack? Man, there was a couple. <laughs> there, was a, there, was a, there was a few people talking smack. I don't want. I don't want to speak right now because you know, uh, 
I can fight those guys straight off the bat because I know how good Valet was, but we'll have to renegotiate a contract because I need to I need to make this I need to do this right, you know. Um at the end of the day, now I'm in the UFC. I don't have to do much talking as as I did before. I'm gonna see all these guys because I know I'm a winner. I'm gonna I'm gonna impress the UFC. The way I fight, the way I've been doing things and all the organizations I fought in. I've been impressing these guys like this. These guys just haven't seen it. Like I always do something impressive, whether it's a slam. Like I, I bring back with the UFC light, and they're gonna like me for sure. And you cut, I believe I was seeing in your story, you had cut 16 pounds in 36 hours. Is that what it was? Mm -hmm. I got the call on Wednesday night, and weigh-ins was Friday morning. Yep. I cut about 16 pounds. I When I got home, I got home about 7, 6 o'clock. When I got the call, I went into the scale. I was like 156, 156.5. Yeah, I cut all the way down to 139, so actually 17 pounds in 36 hours. What was that like? Was there any stress? Because like you get the call, you're excited, but at the same time, it's like, crap, I've got this massive weight cut ahead of me. Was there any fear that you wouldn't make the weight? Oh yeah, man. It was a lot of fear. I didn't make the weight, but it was for the UFC. So I knew I was willing to, I was willing to give everything to make the weight for the UFC. I knew that for sure. I'm like, man, the UFC want to test me. Trev, they're not going to, this is what they wanted you. They want you to put you to the line. You know, you have some losses on your record. So, you know, if you want to show that you're worth it and you want to show your quality, you got to make this weight on two days notice. And me, I'm a competitor. I like to win. I have five split decision losses. I have six losses on my record, but the guy didn't look at these fights good. I got five split decision losses. I've been fighting around the world in different countries. I probably fought in more places than these UFC guys already in different countries than these UFC guys already. So, um, yeah, um, they're going to have to look out for me. And I'm, I'm a guy that comes out and I, I upset and I always bring the game. And I got five split decision losses. And if they watch those fights good, I won most of those fights. So, they're going to have to keep an eye out for that. And what's crazy, had you missed the weight, you wouldn't have been eligible for the bonus, and you did win the bonus, right? So do you look back That's at that and be like, man? Yes. Yeah. Not only if I missed the weight, I would have never been eligible to fight because um, actually I initially weighed in at 140.5 pounds, and then they said the fight will not be on if I wasn't to make 140 pounds. So I had to go back and cut the weight, and it was just all determination and drive, man. Like I said, um, I've, 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 I credit my losses that I have that prepared me for this moment. I don't think an undefeated fighter would have had the ability and the, the drive that I had to get through that fight, not alone the two days, not alone the two-day weight cutting, not alone the, all the medical appointments I had in between cutting weight. An, an undefeated guy would have felt too high up in his – uh in the stage that he's in, and he would have never had the drive to get through something like that. He would have felt like, okay, my shot's coming, I'm undefeated, I'm very good. But by me having the experience, the drive and everything, it helped me get through that so much, all the downs, all the ups to get here, it really um, added up all for that three days that I had to that Valley fight. And what do you do with the bonus? Do you put it in bank account or do you have plans of where you're gonna do with the money? Man, um, I just want my friends, my family, everyone around me to be healthy, happy, and um, of course we want to do something smart with it. We don't want to um, uh, blow it off, but um, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and invest it. Maybe open something up. We'll see how it goes. But um, my number one goal wasn't about the money or anything. Um, the thing that was uh bothering me in this fight is it was two days notice. I had to cut all that weight. My feet was very flat, man. Like. Guys want to critique about the first round. Like, I cut 16 pounds in a day and a half versus a talented guy. Like, my feet was not under me. Like, if they think that's how I fight, they're in for trouble. And uh, my number one thing with that situation is I'm a competitor. I didn't want to lose the fight. I didn't want to go out there and fight him, lose, and just be in the UFC, Trev Jones in the UFC off a loss. That's what they didn't see. I didn't want that. That wasn't going to happen that night. I was in there. Like, I was so intact with the fight. Like, People think I was out of it from the outside. They they didn't feel how I felt. I was in the fight. Like I I, I drew him in. Like we we knew what the game plan was. We watched him. He had great energy. Even not, probably if I was very healthy and everything, he still was a great moving guy. Like he was a well fighter. So 
on that short notice, we knew I didn't have the, the, the time and the ability to just match him straight up and striking and everything. So we knew, let him throw more punches, let him blow himself out. We knew he was going to kick. We knew he was going to kick a lot. And we knew the check hook was going to land at some point. And I'm telling you, we, we talked about it all day. I got videos on my phone of us practicing the same inside leg kick to check hook. I got just like Masvidal and everyone got their little videos in the back. We got all our little videos in the back. So everything was just how, as we planned it. A lot of people felt like the obviously when you dropped him, you were swarming him. That the referees stepped in a little bit too early, considering that uh, in the first round, obviously when you were hurt, they felt like how come they didn't let it go that far for him? But to be fair, I mean he was kind of wrestling the referee towards the end. What were your thoughts on the stoppage and the comments that people have been making, thinking that it was early? Well, the referee was late. He was late. He was out twice. He was out two times. There was one time where it looked like. His neck was like twisted to the left side when I even like didn't hit him. Like I, I hit him with a flurry, boom, 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 boom. After the hammer fist right hand, I hit him with a flurry. Then there was one moment when I looked at him from the top and I was like, this dude is out bad. And he was, he was like as stunned as it gets. And the ref didn't stop it then. And then the ref let him take some more, boom, boom, boom. And I was pushing on his head and hitting him with the right hand after. And um, people can say what they want. They're going to be the people that are going to say, they're going to be the people that say good things about it. They're going to be the people that say the bad things about it. But I know he wasn't going nowhere after that. He would have stood up after that. He was going to get destroyed. So the ref did save him. He was out. He was out. I saw him go out like once or twice in the floor. I woke him up with punches. And I'm for sure of that. He was out. He he got woken up. Um, Yes, he's tough. He was undefeated, pretty much fighter, like 16-2 and two record two split decision losses when I looked him up. So he wanted to fight still. He had determination just like I had determination, but he was out. I wasn't out. That's the difference. I was um still alert. He caught me with a good body shots. That's what we do. We we take shots like that. That's what we train for. That was the difference. But we don't train to go to sleep and wake back up and fight. He was sleeping. And there's a difference between like head trauma, of course, that's when you talk about fighter safety and a referee's job, head trauma is a lot different than body, right? So mm-hmm. uh, like there is an argument there in terms of you in round one versus him in round two. Yeah. Yeah. He wasn't going nowhere, man. He, and I had other moves for that too. Like they, they think I was um, a striker. Like he got knocked out from a jujitsu guy. Dude. He got knocked out from a jujitsu guy. And I just didn't, I, I, I didn't have the energy to execute my normal style off the back, and I didn't want to grapple. I didn't want to get tired. The weight cut was so grueling. So, of course, I had to uh, play it by smart, uh, play it smart, and 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 play it by ear in there. But he he was coming up with his arms back and his neck was wide out, and that's my uh, money move. So there was a lot of things gonna happen to him after that, and and, and the ties were definitely gonna turn. He he wasn't gonna have no more uh, octagon control or anything after that after getting dropped like that for me, because uh, I built off that and you're in danger after that with me. Well, Kevin, I'll leave you with a couple more questions. I appreciate your time. When you want to get back in there? I mean, you said it, no no serious injuries or anything like that. Uh, what, ideally, when would you like to fight again? Well, I have to go back home on Guam. I'm still out here in Vegas. I have to go back home on Guam and take care of some stuff. But maybe, um, I would say December will be good. December will probably be good. Um, January, somewhere around there. Um, I will want some time, not time off, not like I need time. It's just that the weight cut and everything happened so fast and everything happened so fast. And if I was in the UFC already, I would have made changes in my life and get myself settled where I need to be to get the best training. So it's more about that now. It's not like I'm not ready to fight someone again or anything like that. I want to go get I'm in the UFC now. I want to go get settled in. I want to get to where I need to be. Uh, maybe get all my things on Guam settled where I need it to be in the next month, two, three months. And then, yeah, I'll be ready to fight again. Anybody, man, as um, long as it makes sense for my contract and we can do it, man. I'm, I'm a beast out there, man. They're gonna, the UFC is going to like me. I know they're going to like me. And is the idea to try to build off momentum, like you said, he's a very highly touted prospect. So this is a big win. So is the idea you had the great moment, a uh, big big win over a very highly touted prospect. Is the idea to try to build off of momentum and get an opponent that propels you forward? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh well, like I feel like he was better than a lot of opponents already. That's the thing. That's the that's the crazy thing. Is because I'm a student of the game. I get respect where it's due. 
I know a lot of good fighters in the UFC, but I know he was better than a lot of other 135 pounders in the UFC. Um, I probably can see guys not as good as him in my next two fights. Um, but, you know, it doesn't mean I'm going to sleep on him. I train equal as hard for everybody. I put in 100% of my effort. But, um, yeah, um, it's all about, you know, the right moves now, you know. Uh, with the contract, if, like I said, if, if, if a high-level top guy feel I deserve a top shot after beating such a top guy, then all you got to do is match the... I know everyone says it's about money and everything. It's not really about money. It's just that if I want to fight that guy, then you give me what he's worth too. If you want to throw me right in there with him right away, because I don't, I'm not, I can take it slow. I ain't got no rush. I'm, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get to fight everybody, and I'm excited about it. And I'm in the UFC now, and they're gonna see Trev Jones for a while for sure. Awesome stuff. Well, Trevin, I really appreciate you taking the time. Again, congratulations on a fantastic win and a fantastic moment. The bonus as well. Uh, I appreciate mm -hmm. you taking the time and really looking forward to your next one. Yes, I appreciate it, man. Guys, don't sleep on me. That one round, that was three days. Three days, guys. Wait till I get a count. You'll see. 